Hello everybody, June here. Welcome to installment number four of the Vintage Cape Coat Making Series. In this video, I'm going to put together the cape part and attach it to the coat. And I have all my pieces here. There's three pieces. So there's one center piece in the back and then it has um, seams not quite on the side, but they are... So there's two, two back seams that um, attach the center back to the side front pieces, which then have uh, shaping in the shoulder in the form of a bit of a raglan shoulder, because <laughs> it's not actually a sleeve. So I have my pieces here. I have them thread marked and there's some chalk in here just so that I can see what I'm doing. And the first step in this process, according to the pattern, is to stay stitch this corner here and then clip into it, fold the cape facing to the inside and finish this edge here. That is before you even attach it to the coat. After that, um, there's some folding of this top bit here and it gets put on the coat. So to finish the edges of the two front facings on the inside and then on the hem, I'm using this like velvet, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not silk velvet, but it's a um, velvet ribbon that I bought at a local so store called Makuba. Uh, here in New York City, unfortunately they're closing, but the ribbon, rather than being used as bias binding, what I'm gonna do, and I will show you when I'm actually doing it, is I will stitch it right side to wrong side of the fabric, and then when it folds over, let me get it here, it will look something like this, and then I will hand stitch this edge to the coat, or to the, the cape. And I'm gonna get started with that. It's gonna be a lot of sewing. It's gonna be a lot of hand sewing. So I'm probably gonna insert a time lapse right here. I've stay stitched here and clipped into my corners. And now what I'm gonna do is fold this under on the seam allowance. I'm gonna have to clip a little bit more there. And then here again in the seam allowance and this line that I've marked with the thread, rather than being my seam line, well, my seam allowance, is where I'm going to stitch the cape to the coat later. So the stitching will be just a little bit away from the edge while that seam line, um, seam allowance is folded down. So let's get to pressing. edges all pressed and folded in. You don't see the stitch line for stay stitching. You don't see the corner. It's just one straight uh, fold, which is great because this is what's going to be most visible on this thing because it's going to be on the outside. And so now it's time to attach the ribbon. The ribbon being velvet does have a nap. So when I press it, so when I touch it, when I stroke it, going this way is very smooth. But if I do it in the other direction, it's actually pretty rough. So I'm going to treat the ribbon like I would treat any other sort of, um, you know, velvety nap fabric. I'm going to make sure that I attach it in such a way that the nap, which is what that's called, is going down so that it is smooth when I stroke it. Otherwise, it just gets a little ruffly and it can um, cling to your clothes and it's just not pretty. But I'm also gonna make sure that I do the same on both sides because even though no one's gonna see it, I will see it and it will bother me a lot. By the time I get to the hem, which is going to be another video probably, uh, it's gonna be a little different because it's gonna go side to side. Uh, so it doesn't really matter which way the nap is going. But let's sew this ribbon onto this facing. I have now 
completely sewn the uh, ribbon to the, uh, the cape. I have done it in a slip stitch, very invisible. I did it off camera because it is just slip stitching. Terribly boring to watch. Uh, but if you are interested in me doing some very basic hand stitches tutorials, I'll be happy to do that at some other point, but I thought that I would spare you the boringness at this point. So the fronts are finished in the, in the center front, I guess, facing type things. And then now I have to do the uh, raglan. So they're called darts in the pattern, but they're not darts as such. Um, I, I guess raglan darts. So I will do that. I've pinned this one here already. And then I am going to attach the side fronts of the cape to the center back of the cape and assemble it. And I will catch up with you after that. And I've switched to this machine because I don't trust the other one to do top stitching, which I will be doing once I attach or, or to attach the cape to the coat. Uh, the other vintage machine is perfectly fine for seams, but this is pretty thick. It's going to be one, two, three layers of wool, one layer of flannel, one layer of hair canvas. That's a lot, I think. And I think this one is going to be much better. Here are some both darts and I am measuring them up against each other to make sure that they both end at the same spot they didn't. So what I did then was mark where I had to extend the shorter one to and then I just put it back through the machine and made it a little bit longer. That way they are both the same. And after I sewed the seams, I went ahead and I pressed them. I also trimmed the uh, shoulder darts, the raglan dart, pressed that open on both sides. I have put the cape together and it is a lot of fabric. It's really hard to see in this framing here, but it's a ton of fabric, which makes me very glad now that I see it and I see how unwieldy it is, it makes me very glad that I didn't go on um, with the thicker wool because that would have been heavy. So I have done all of the seaming in the back. I have pressed both from the wrong side and from the right side because my friends, sewing is pressing and if you are not pressing all of your seams as you seam them, so right after you're done with them, then I suggest you do because it makes an enormous difference and yes uh, I'm trying to show it to you here but it's really impossible but it's big so what I'm gonna do um, I I've been thinking about how I wanted to finish the two seams in the back not the not the um, raglan dart but these First, I thought about doing something like, um, not bias binding, but Hong Kong seams. And I'm feeling pretty lazy, if I am honest with you. And I couldn't find any fabric that I thought would match well enough for this. And most of the time you won't see it, it's in the back, but I know that they're there. So I want to finish them. Then I thought maybe I would surge them, but that doesn't look all that nice. So what I think I'm going to do is a seam finish called, um, well, it's not called anything, but basically um, it has a name. I can't remember right now. Stitch. Essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a row of tiny stitching inside the seam allowance, and then I'm going to trim. And what that's going to do is stop the fabric from fraying. If you do the pinking ones, it's probably better, but for fabrics that fray more, but this one doesn't fray all that much. And really, it's just, 
it's just for my my sanity, for my peace of mind that I know I've done something with those scenes rather than just leave them. And another reason I'm doing it is because I did do, I did mark notches, if you can see them here. Maybe not, but I did mark tiny notches by clipping into the seam allowance and so I do want to get rid of those. So that shouldn't take too long. And then I am going to stay stitch the neckline and stay stitching is done inside the seam allowance for the neckline so that it doesn't stretch as you put it onto your uh, garment, the rest of the garment. Um, after that, I will be able to put it on the coat. Now it's time to put the coat and the cape together. So what's going to happen now is I'm gonna take these two monsters and I'm gonna line them up. So this is the right side of a coat which I'm going to put to the wrong side of the cape. So wrong side to right side, because of course they are both going to be on the outside. So both right sides need to be outside and I'm going to match them up. So I'm gonna start with the center backs, which I think that's them. Yes, maybe. Gotta make sure that all the other parts match. So here, the the raglan dart matches to the shoulder um, seam of the of the coat. There's a lot of a lot of wool in there. Putting them all together, and I'm gonna do this all the way around until I get to this bit here, which is where I am going to very, very carefully match the folded edge of the cape to the line on the coat where I'm going to stitch them. But that has to be perfect. So I'm going to take my time. And just to make sure that everything stays together when I try to sew it. Pinning is not enough, so I'm going to hand baste it. And that's also going to take me a little bit because, again, slow hand sewer. I am ready to do the, I think, most nerve-wracking thing about this whole construction, which is the um, seam that attaches the cape to the coat on the front. Because, again, it is very visible and there's a lot of layers and there's also a lot of fabric which is another reason why i got this machine it has a very big throat uh, the largest of any one uh, of any machine i have um, and so it's not a seam in the sense that the edge is going to be on the side of the presser foot like the whole thing is going to be in here so i'm using a walking foot because i don't think that without it i would get a clean enough seam and the instructions say to make that stitching line a quarter of an inch in from the folded edge of the cape. I am going to test and see what I think will look better. Wish me luck. So here it is. Cape is attached to the coat and I'm wearing my very handy seamstress uh, belt aka my measuring tape. But I did it a quarter of an inch and I'm going to do a close up in a minute just so you can see it. But it's attached at a quarter of an inch. I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, then do a second line of stitching closer to the edge or if I'm going to do some um, hand stitching. But here it is before doing the collar and the facings. Let me turn around and do a little spin so you can see it. It 
it is pretty great. Um, because the cape isn't lined, I'm feeling a little bit of friction on my clothes. And I'm not gonna take it apart, but if I had to do it again, I think I might consider lining the cape with um, silk or something slippery, especially for the shoulders. But other than that, it's great. Uh, you can see here my, um, my ribbon and this is it for this episode. In the next episode, I am going to attach the collar and the facings. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.